Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at encoding, and in particular encoding numbers. Alright, let's get going. So here I have an example of Google Translate, translating from English to Spanish, Arabic, and Hindi. And if you understand that, then you basically understand what encoding is. Encoding is when I take numbers, letters, speech, images, and video, and I translate that into the computer world. So again, encoding is basically translating between human and computer, and the AP board wants you to appreciate this because you can then see how computers are present in your everyday life or some mumbo jumbo like that. So what is the language of humans? Well, we've mentioned it before, letters and numbers and that kind of stuff. What about the language of computers? Well, computers are made up of circuit boards and chips, and circuit boards and chips are made up of transistors, lots and lots of transistors, and all they know is power on and power off. That's all, nothing else, power on or power off, on or off. Hold it right there. Yes. What do you mean, yes? Yes. Is that all you can say? No. That's a clip from the 1982 movie Tron, where bit could only be yes or no. And it's pretty accurate to real life. In real life, a bit can be either on or off, which is pretty much the same as yes or no. And all computer information is stored as bits. A couple of little pieces of information that are important. Bits is written with a lowercase b. That's so you don't get confused with bytes, which is capital B. I'll go over bytes later. And bits stands for binary digit, in case you were wondering. So just to summarize this section, because it's super important, a bit is the smallest piece of information a computer can have, and it's gonna be either on or off. All right, so now that we've gone over what bits are and why computers think in terms of bits, we're gonna get back to our problem of encoding, and that is basically translating between human and computer. And we're gonna look at translating numbers between human and computer. So humans use something called base 10 with our number system. And another term for this is decimal. The term you're going to need to know for the AP exam is decimal. So be sure you know decimal means human numbers. So obviously all of you know how human numbers work already, but I'm gonna go over it real quick just so you can see the parallel between how human numbers work and how computer numbers work. So take the number 123. We have a three in the ones place. And this one actually comes from 10 to the zeroth power. Remember that because we're going to use it later. We have a two in the tens place. This 10 comes from 10 to the one. And we have a one in the hundreds place. And this hundred comes from 10 to the two. So remember that concept of powers because again, we're going to use it later. All right, so 123 then becomes one times 100, two times 10, and three times one. You add it all together and you get 123. So that right there is numbers from the human point of view. And now we're going to look at numbers from the computer point of view. Numbers in computer are done in base 2, which is also referred to as binary. The term that the AP board will use is binary. So you want to know this term binary. And the term binary is related to the fact that bits can only be on or off. That is, they have two states. So the way we're going to make bits work with numbers is to say this. Let's say each number is going to be 4 bits. We're going to say the first bit will stand for 2 to the 0. The second bit will stand for 2 to the 1. The third bit will stand for 2 to the 2. And the fourth bit will stand for 2 to the 3. So when we arrange numbers like this, these right here, the powers are place values. And again, their powers are 2. So this is pretty much the same as our place values for the decimal system when we go 10 to the 0, which is 1, 10 to the 1, which is 10, 10 to the 2, which is 100. This is the equivalent in binary. In the second row here, we're going to write down the decimal equivalents of these place values, which we get by doing 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4, and 2 to the 3 is 8. Doing the code.org curriculum, they call this the flippy-do. All right, so now with all that knowledge, we're ready to convert binary to decimal, or computer to human. And we're going to use basically the same procedure that we did before with decimal. So if I have the binary number 0000, 0, 0, 0 that means I have 08s, 04s, 02s, and 01s. And when I add up all the numbers from that, I get a 0. That one was easy, so let's try another. With the binary number 0001, I have 08s, 04s, 02s, and 11. And when I add up everything from that, I get 1. 0010 0, gives me 08s, 04s, 12, and 01s. So I add it all up together, and I get 2. 0011 will be 08s, 04s, but 1, 2, and 1, 1. When I add that up together, I get 3. 0100, zero, zero. that means 08s, 1, 4, but 02s and 01s. I add it all together and I get 4. 
0, 1, 0, 1. That means I have 1, 4, and 1, 1, but no 8s and no 2s. So add up my 4 and my 1, and I get 5. 0, 1, 1, 0. That means I have 1, 4, and 1, 2, but no 8s and no 1s. So I have a 4 and a 2, add it together, and I get 6. Finally, 0, 1, 1, 1. That means I have a 4, a 2, and a 1, but no 8s. Add it all up together, and I get a 7. And it goes on and on. Again, if I want to convert binary to decimal, that is computer to human, this is the procedure. And with these four bits, I can go all the way up to 15. If I turn on all of these bits, then I have 15. Again, these four bits will allow me to go from 0 to 15, which is a maximum of 16 numbers. So what happens if I need to count higher than that? Well, I need to add more bits. So if I add one more bit, I can count from 0 to 31, which is 32 numbers. And there's a formula that tells me how high I can count up, depending on how many bits I have. And it's this, and it's super important. This formula is 2 to the number of bits is equal to my combinations. Again, 2 to the number of bits is equal to my combinations. So if I had, say, 8 bits, I could get 2 to the 8 combinations. This gives me 256 combinations. And that allows me to count in the range from 0 to 255. And if you do the math, 0 to 255, you'll see that's 256 numbers. 0 to 256 would be 257 numbers. But usually the convention is we start from 0. So it's 0 to 255. And if I have 8 bits, that gives me 255. Finally, just want to point out this formula again. 2 to the bits is equal to the number of combinations that you get. It's a super mega ultra important formula. It comes up all the time in the AP exam questions. So you'll want to know it. All right, so the next thing we're going to learn to do is convert decimal to binary. You're going to see lots of AP questions that look like this. So for example, the 6 on the left, 2 the binary on the right. How do we do that? The basic concept is I'm going to rewrite my decimal number as binary place values. And that sounds kind of confusing, so I'll do some examples right now. So the 6 I can rewrite as 4 plus 2, which correspond to binary place values 4 and 2. That means 4 and 2 are on. And I can write 6 as 0, 1, 1, 0. Another example, we have 11 decimal that we're converting to binary. We can rewrite 11 as 8 plus 2 plus 1. So that means the 8 bit is turned on, the 2 bit is turned on, and the 1 bit is turned on, which gives us 1, 0, 1, 1. So as you just saw, the first way we can solve all of these problems is by inspection. We can break down the initial number into binary place values and solve it by inspection. The problem is, harder problems are not that easy to solve by inspection. So we have another way of solving this in which we're going to apply an algorithm. Algorithm is just a computer term for a method that we can use to solve a problem. So I'll show you how it works if we're trying to convert the decimal 6 to binary. So step 1 is we want to find a binary place value that's less than the decimal. So the decimal here is 6. Binary place value less than that is 4. All right, so next we divide our number by that place value. And what we get is 1 with a remainder of 2. What that means is we can rewrite 6 as 4 plus 2. The 4 comes because we have 1, 4 in 6, and the 2 comes from the remainder. It also means we can turn on the 4 bit in our binary table here, or flippy do, or whatever you happen to call it. So at that point, we're done, because we can rewrite 6 as 4 plus 2, and 4 and 2 are both place values in our binary table. We can fill it out now. We turn on the 4 and the 2, and all the other ones are off. So that one's a little bit of an easier one. I'll show you a harder one next. All right, so for this one, I'm going to convert decimal 13 to binary. Step one, we find the binary place value that's a little bit less than that. That would be 8. So I do 13 divided by 8. I get 1 with the remainder of 5. So what that means is I can rewrite 13 as 8 plus 5. Why? Because the 8 comes from 1 times 8. And the 5 is the remainder. So that means the 8 bit is turned on. But this time, I'm not done, because the 5 is not one of the binary place values. So I have to keep on going this time. So I have to keep going until I can rewrite 5 as binary place values. So now we're going to keep on going, except with 5. So we're going to find the binary place value that's less than that decimal. That's 4. We'll divide 5 by that place value. So 5 divided by 4, the answer is 1, with the remainder of 1. So knowing we can break up 5 into 4 plus 1, we can rewrite 13 as 8 plus 4 plus 1. Again, the 4 comes from 1 times 4, and the 1 comes from the remainder. So this means our 4 bit is turned on. But truthfully, at that point, we're done. We can recognize that 8, 4, and 1 are all binary place values in the table. So we know that's what our answer is. 1, 1, 0, 1, and that's all good. And that 
is what you need to know for the AP exam. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.